Hey, welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. We're doing this live stream from two places, from my studio here at home and from Whip Records in Berkeley. Uh, we got a great show for you. We have uh, a special guest youth performer by the name of Eric Gann, who's just a fantastic classical pianist. He's going to play some classical piano for you. And then I'm going to play some Scott Joplin music for you and talk a little bit about Scott Joplin's struggle to get his ragtime music uh, acknowledged as a classic American art form. So uh, it's a pretty cool story, so stick around for that. Before we start, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Bart Sullivan. He's the founder of the Benicia Performing Arts Foundation, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the, uh, the foundation. Hello, my name is Bart Sullivan. I am the president and founder of the Benicia Performing Arts Foundation. Thank you for coming to our show. We really appreciate it. But before we begin, I thought I'd give you a little background information on the foundation, you know, what we're trying to do, where we came from, what our mission is, and of course, what we're trying to accomplish. Well, a number of years ago, as a young guitar player, I was brought on stage by a famous flamenco guitarist named Juan Serrano. Juan took me all over California to play in major venues with him, and the experience was mind-blowing and just changed my life to this day. So in 2004, I decided to go ahead and form a foundation, a nonprofit, uh, with, this, with the mission to bring young artists on stage, uh, to open up for and perhaps play with major acts in professional venues, knowing that this experience could change their life forever and give them the opportunity to see what it's like to play in a professional venue. Well, we really believe that of course, recitals and playing uh, in other venues is, is very valuable. This experience is something different that will stick with them, hopefully, for the rest of their life, as it has for me. So thank you again for coming. We really appreciate your support and, and the support of the artists. So I hope you enjoy the show. Take care. Starting off our show today from Whip Records in Berkeley, California, Eric Gann.
Thanks, Eric. That was great. Great job. What a fabulous piano player he is. So at this part of the show, I'm going to play a little bit of Scott Joplin. And uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier is that Scott Joplin had a real struggle with getting his music, Ragtime, accepted as a classic American art form. He believed that since it was written on paper, note for note, as you should play it, uh, it should be considered classical music. Um, not everybody agreed with that. Uh, there was quite a uh, rebellion and uh, dissent among the critics and the cultural leaders of that time. They really resisted that idea because ragtime music was born in brothels, it was played in saloons, not concert hall worthy music at all as far as they were concerned. Um, they envisioned their music growing up the music of America growing up and maturing kind of along the lines of what happened in Europe, right? Over hundreds of years, all the great European composers made this unbelievably fantastic music. And they played it with symphony orchestras and played it in concert halls. So that was uh, that's some pretty tough act to follow. So America music, what would America's classical music be? Well, let's play some Scott Joplin music and... Uh, We'll, we'll explore this a little bit more. The first piece I'd like to start out with is a piece by Scott Joplin called The Entertainer. It was a huge hit in the 1970s when it was used as a uh, part of the soundtrack of the movie The Sting. The Entertainer by Scott Joplin.
The Entertainer by Scott Joplin. Now, if you were to walk down a street in Sedalia, Missouri in 1890s, you would probably hear in the distance the celebratory sounds of people having a great time, partying away, gambling in saloons, um, and rising gently above that uh, din of those people's voices, you'd probably hear some music a lot like this next piece I'm going to play called The Pineapple Rag. The Pineapple Rag by Scott Joplin. Scott Joplin's Pineapple Rag. So what is this music called ragtime? 
Ragtime is a style of music that is based heavily on syncopation. And what is syncopation? Well, I think the best way to show you what syncopation is, is to first show you what it's not. This piece is not syncopated. It's all very even, very on the beat. If we were to take the same piece and syncopate it, it might sound something like this. So what I'm doing there is I'm emphasizing the beats that were weaker beats. And so by emphasizing those, you get syncopation. So syncopation is emphasizing the weaker beats. And that's what Scott Joplin and his guys did when they uh, worked on ragtime and they developed the style of music. One of the reasons that it had such a big impact is because the music that was popular in that day was a music called The March. And John Philip Sousa was the king of the march. People were used to hearing marches. Marches were very on the beat. Everything was on the beat. He'd get his tubas going, and then he'd add a little snare drum, a little harmony, and then to that he would add a melody that was equally on the beat. And that's what the march was. People loved it. People danced to it. They marched to it, of course, and it was the popular music of the time. So what Scott Joplin and his guys did was they said, okay, we like this march, so we'll play that in our left hand. It's nice and steady. And then in the right hand, we'll take and we'll play something syncopated. And you get something like this. just mess with people's sense of rhythm just enough to uh, just drive them crazy. And that was syncopation. And that was ragtime. So it had a huge impact. People went nuts for it and uh, it just changed the world, became a worldwide hit. The next piece I'd like to play by Scott Joplin is a tune called the Maple Leaf Rag. In 1899, Scott Joplin released the sheet music for this song, along with a publisher named John Stark, and it became such a huge hit, it just blew up all over the United States and the world. Um, the marching bands from America, the biggest marching band, of course, was John Philip Sousa's marching band. They went over to the Paris Exposition in 1900 and they played the Maple Leaf Rag and it caused a huge stir over in Europe, too. The French would blast it from their carousels and they'd play it in their coffee shops and it was just huge. It was just huge. It really took off. So uh, I think we should play the Ma Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin. The Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin.
Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin. This next piece was written by Rimsky Korsakov, Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov, and it was called The Flight of the Bumblebee. In the 1950s, Jack Fina turned it into a boogie woogie, <laughs> and then uh, I've thrown in my own little special sauce along to that arrangement, and here we have the Bumble Boogie. This is the Bumble Boogie. Bumble Boogie. Thanks for watching the show. Hope you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun putting it on. 
Uh, stick around because we're going to have a meet and greet virtually and we'll be able to answer any questions you have and interact in the chat window. Uh, so feel free to type any questions you have into the chat window and uh, we'll field them from there. All right, see you soon. Hey, hey. How are we doing, Dave? We're getting close? We're on. You're uh, actually, uh, we are live. Thanks hey. for watching the show. Hope you enjoy. You got to turn down your volume on your side so we don't get that feedback loop. We are live. Yeah, mine's off. I'm in a different room, actually. All right. So we are live on YouTube Here we right are, Mark. now. You there? Right. There you go. You're Great. Right. Bart's here. His I'm here. There he is. Okay. And uh, hey, we're waiting right for on. we're waiting for Eric right now. How we doing, Dave? Getting close. Bart, you need to right. you need to lower the volume. Yeah, I need to move, I'll move over. I'll move out of the way here, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I was so excited about the whole thing. I got like. Uh, there we go. Okay, I'm I'm in a better spot. There you go. Yeah. So I'm not sure where uh, Eric is, but hopefully he'll be able to join us here shortly. He got. Maybe something happened, I don't know. But uh, at any rate, uh, in the meantime, we have Greg and uh, Bart, and I'll turn it over to you guys. Wow, nice. Hey. There you go. Wow. It's all good? I like the lava yeah. lamp in the background, Greg. It's really it's good. That's <laughs> neat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's my studio. Yeah, your studio is the lava it's, lamp. It's so clean. I, I need some inspiration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should see the other view from the opposite direction. It looks like a TV studio with stuff all over the place. That, that's where all the like, garbage is. <laughs> that's where all the garbage yeah. is, right. Well, Dave, Dave, thank you, man, so much for um, for the Aragant videos and audio. That stuff sounded fantastic. It really came Oh, yeah, out really it really well. sounded fantastic. The, uh, Eric sounded great. He was like, I mean, his quality of his sound was just spectacular. Yeah, well, he's we a, a great player. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's tech. Yeah, he's an amazing player. And what I like is um, how we had it was set up. It was beautifully performed, and it was also just the sound was amazing. We live streamed it through our. We had our iPhones and put it through our, our Apple TV, and just to make, it sounded really good. So yeah, it's it's uh, you know studio quality audio uh, recording that you know, I marry with the video um, that I'm able to do here in the studio. And I've actually, wow. done, I and I actually have contacted or I've done a lot. I mean, a lot. There's lots of great young piano players in the Bay Area, and I've recorded quite a few. Uh, just the same way Eric came in, he, that to to record something for either a college audition video or a international competition or something like that. And I've I've uh, over the years I've worked with just many incredible young talented yeah. kids either in classical music jazz you know rock all that all different styles so uh we, we got a lot of talent in the bay area neat tell us uh, tell uh, tell the audience about your about you know who you are and your studio and the whole the whole thing so i'm david landon and my recording studio is called whip records and uh, we're located in berkeley california that's where eric's uh video was filmed and uh you can check us out online www.whiprecords.com record all kinds of music. And in the last few years, I've sort of really been developing or it's been a lot of referrals, been working with lots of people like Eric, who, uh, who's, you know, their parents, obviously the ones who contact me initially, but kids as young as, you know, 10 and 12 up to, you know, 17, 18 coming in to record, like I said, these uh, audition videos, but where they want a good quality video and a good and good quality audio um, and we've had lots of success with kids getting into major competitions and Juilliard and, you know, on and on. So uh, it's been working out for the folks that come in and, and do that. So, right. And I'm glad the foundation we could, you know, and, and the city of Benicia, we could help put on, uh, you know, Eric as well to, to show his talent and help him in his, in his uh, quest for a professional, something professional I guess career. What? I got Eric coming into the to Zoom call right Fantastic. now. There he is. And Eric, my fingers are burning. All right. Hey. <laughs> you made it. Eric. Sorry about that. Hi, Eric. Yeah. Great. Bit of a technical issue, but, you know, we, we got it resolved. So. 
That's good. Eric, wow. Nice to meet you. I'm Bart. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to pleasure. meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Very impressive. Thank you for putting Very it all impressive. together. Oh, absolutely. We, um, it's amazing. We're my, our, our pleasure. And uh, yeah, I'm a guitar player, but my hands are burning now to play. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <what you want. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Eric, so, that was beautiful, man. I really enjoyed watching you play. Yeah. And hearing you play and, so, uh, thank you. Eric, how, how old were you when you started playing? Uh, I was five years old. That's when I got my start. And yeah. how old are you now? Now I'm 17. So still going. Yeah, wow. I plan to keep going. You know, Fantastic. And how many hours a day do you practice? Uh, yeah, it's, you know, usually around two hours a day. Um, you know, I'm sure parents and teachers would love to hear that it's more, but it is usually around, around a couple hours. That's already great. You know, two hours a day, you can, well, you, you're proof positive. If you, uh, you know, I always tell people in playing music, there's, there's no secret. It's just hours put in. And if you practice like you're practicing with two hours every day, you're going to get great the way you are. You know, you gotta yeah, have, you gotta absolutely. have talent too, but it's a, uh, it's a uh, 99% hard work as I'm sure both you mm -hmm as everybody here can testify to, you know, any, any musician who's really serious has to work very hard at it. Absolutely. And yeah. it, it pays off. You can hear the results in your playing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. No question about it. Um, are we, are we getting chat questions from any audience members at this point or? I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing any chat uh, questions, but if there are any folks out there that have any questions, please type away. Yeah, I just post a little thing in there to ask them to ask any questions that they want in the chat, and uh, we'll see what we get. But I have a question to start off with uh, for Eric. And Eric, yeah. uh, my question is, what is happening at the very beginning when you sit there quietly, silently, before you start playing? What's going mm -hmm. through your mind at that point? It's like you're an Olympic athlete about to start <laughs> some... Yeah crazy hard routine yeah yeah i mean it is it is kind of like that you know um i think a lot of sports athletes talk about getting in the zone right and for me you know classical music it's like you there, there's a similar sort of mm -hmm. um effect where you have to sort of get in the you know get get in the emotional and um you know thought zone for it so, um, yeah, it, it is kind of like that. And y usually when I'm sitting there, I'm trying to, you know, um, just sort of get get in the silence of the moment, you know, and um, I might run through a little bit of the melody or the rhythm or something to, to remind myself yeah. because memory issues do happen. But, um, yeah, it's for the most part, it's like trying to get get in the right feeling of the piece and trying to, you know, represent what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And, and who are you studying with, by the way? Uh, right now, I'm studying with um, a professor in, in Southern California. His name is um, uh, Ning An. So he um, is an associate professor at the at CSU Fullerton down there. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. It's a, great to have me. Uh, I still take lessons. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... It's like uh, I told my wife, I said, you, you know, there, there's no way you can ever be, you can ever get to the end. There's no end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you guys got to keep going and yeah. learning and, and, and learning from these great people. I, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and for me, you know, the experience was because I've, I've been through um, a couple of teachers now. Right. He, um, Professor mm -hmm. An is my is my third teacher. You know, and each one was like a new step up for me. You know, it was a different um, it was an entirely different level. So, yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, learning from the people around you, learning from everybody right, yeah. is definitely something that, you know, applies in music and everything else for me. Oh, yeah. Have you, uh, have you, are you going to stay strictly classical or are you going to move uh, into different genres? Yeah, so um, I, I definitely want to expand into different genres. You know, in, in middle school, I had a phase where um, um, I, I participated in the jazz band. Yeah. And it was really fascinating for me because as a classical musician, everything is so like, I mean, first of all, in, in the classical world, there's sort of like a, a stigma against other genres, you know, with all the elites right, and right. all that. <laughs> but right. um, yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> but, no, it was there, fascinating because there's, it was, there's, 
There's yeah, stigma. Yeah, there's stigma like, in other in other styles too. Just so you know, <laughs> against like, classical. Yeah, yeah well, you know, yeah. like jazz musicians <laughs> think it's just jazz, and you know, blah, on and on and on. So it's not just in the classical yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That is totally true. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, I, I was fascinated with jazz, and and you know, um, Mr. Ron or, or Greg. Can I call you Greg? You can right? call me Greg. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So what Greg played the last piece, um, the bumble, you know, bumble boogie. That kind of thing it was it fascinated me because there's this like melding between improvisation and classical music and um uh, my te my teacher the my middle school band teacher his name was mr mac um, one of his favorite players was keith jarrett and really? so he was like classically trained and dove into jazz right and that sort of thing just really fascinated me you know i i want to experiment that in the future absolutely did you get into improvisation in the jazz band I tried, I tried because I was there for one year. It was uh, my, you know, my eighth grade year. And by the end of that year, I could sort of feel like, just from being in the environment, like the osmosis of the situation, I could kind of feel like it was, you know, um, I was maybe getting to the point where I could experiment a little with improvisation in our pieces. But um, after that in high school, uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to continue with jazz band. So it kind of, no, I feel like it, it probably wouldn't be as easy for me as it was back then. Well, that's a great experience to have, though. Yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, let's see if we got any more, uh, any questions in the chat yet? I don't see any yet. Not a very inquisitive uh, membership of uh, viewers today, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I, I'm on my phone. How do I get comments? I can't see comments from. I'm, I'm on the Zoom call, so let me see if I can. How do I do that? Well, they're in the chat window, which should show up underneath, underneath the video on your phone. Let me see if I go to chat. Live chat. Ray Grant. I can see that. Didn't see that. Harry Zabel said, fabulous, Greg. <laughs> yes, that's great. I'm glad to hear people liked it. Um, uh, Greg, oh. Greg, Ron, when did you start playing piano? Oh, well, there's a question. Well, I started actually when I was 10, and I was a guitar player. Huh. And I was taking guitar lessons, which I started around 8 or 9. I think it was 9. And uh, I had a teacher who was not teaching me what I wanted to learn how to play, and so I wasn't really progressing. I wasn't into it. And so my mom said, hey, try the piano. And I said, I'm not touching that thing. My sister plays piano. It's a girl's instrument. I can't, I'm not touching it. And she goes, I'll make a deal with it. She goes, try this great teacher that teaches all the kids in the neighborhood for three weeks. And if, you're, if you still don't like it after three weeks, then you don't have to continue. And I said, oh, okay, sounds like a deal. So this teacher shows up and kind of interviews me and we talk about music and what I like. And, and uh, next week he shows up with a piece of sheet music from my favorite song off the radio. And I just go nuts. Are you kidding? We get, we get to play this? He goes, uh, of course, absolutely. So he hooked me by <laughs> giving me stuff that I wanted to play. That's but fantastic. First, and once we did that, then he later, yeah, then he got me into jazz. He got me into classical later. And he just kind of led me down the road gently. And it's just, I ate it all up. So thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I should tell you my, my story about playing guitar. Uh, uh, I started off with the wrong intention. I went to a Peter Frampton concert. Oh, and, man. Uh, and he was singing and he had that long, and I had kind of similar long hair at the time, believe it or not, lots of long hair. And uh, uh, I look up and I see him playing. I look over and there's all these women are you know, looking at him and dancing. <laughs> and I said, I think this is a lot more fun than playing and working at a burger joint. So I'm going <laughs> to. So yeah, and just I, just so you know, Eric, uh, Peter Frampton in the late 1970s was the uh, he put out a record that was the, one of the biggest. Maybe the I think the, it was the biggest yeah. live album ever recorded. He became a massive, huge star. 
that's who he's mm-hmm. talking about. And, you know, yeah, he's, he's he still was, around, still he, plays, but he was huge at that in the late seventies. And you know, we just saw him last year, and he was pretty. He's still good. He's still oh, yeah. he's a, he's a touring band. And uh, Eric, Eric, if you get a chance to listen to him, you should. It's, it's a wonderful player, great jazz yeah, guitar yeah, player, will. actually. Um, yeah. Hey, Mark, turn your camera back on. Oh, lost you. You know what? I, I was. I was sorry, guys. I was looking up for the te- for the text, and there we go. Um, what what happened? Uh, uh, so what I should tell you when I also so I, then I got then I for me though what happened is like I don't know Eric have you got into classical but I was I was working at a music store in Fresno and this guy named Juan Serrano walks in one day who was going to be a professor at Fresno State and he's a flamenco guitarist I had no idea who the guy was mm-hmm. so I so my my mom goes well maybe you should take lessons from that guy <laughs> why not <laughs> why not okay so started taking lessons from this guy and I realized that he was like one of the most probably uh, compar- comparatively he was probably the same level as Segovia only in the flamenco world and mm-hmm. Andre Segovia so amazing uh, cl- uh, flamenco player and we played and we he taught me and then that's what started me on and down the road uh, it's an amazing you know guy and um, he, he hooked me when he showed me how fast he could play with his you know his fingers I'm like oh my god that's incredible yeah, so, yeah. I look at some, you know, videos of guitar players on YouTube, you know, um, not just classical guitar, but also some of the more um, more trendy stuff. I don't know. Just yeah, <laughs> guitar. Totally. Yeah, yeah. It's it's totally impressive for sure. Like, uh, that's piano another, technique is, is one thing. But, that's, you know. that's another thing, too, with, you know, your generation, Eric, is that you have this incredible tool that is YouTube to yes. learn, yeah. learn songs and learn how to play stuff. I mean, the three of us didn't, you know, we had to like, you know, listen to an album and keep lifting up the record or listening to a cassette and keep rewinding it and listening over and over to hear something. Now you got tutorials of people showing you exactly how to play everything. It's it's an yeah. incredible tool. I mean, it really mm-hmm. is to, to learn music and to play music. You too is incredible for that, I think. It really Absolutely. is amazing. Yeah. And there's yeah. so much out there. I mean, so many great, uh, great lessons and Especially if you want to pick up something that you maybe forgot in the song, so they show you how to play it again. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, even now when I learn, when I learn new pieces, um, I always listen to recordings of, you know, artists um, yeah. playing it first. Yeah, absolutely. But the, but the one reason I still have a teacher, or teachers, depending on, um, there's, a, there's a Jason McGuire's in Berkeley, another great flamenco player. I take from him sometimes. A guy named Artisher Farah in L.A. And I, but I, we have to do, of course, virtual, so that's a little harder. But the one thing is the feedback, so that I can have them give me critique on what how my technique or what I'm doing, and you know, kind of the interaction. That's the one thing mm-hmm. YouTube ha- can't do really is that interaction. You can see it, but it's a, a bit like you need that extra little bit sometimes to make sure you're not doing something wrong, or you know, it's kind of like singing in the shower. It sounds great in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Cool. Well, this was fun. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Eric, so much yeah. for participating on this. Thank, thank you. Thank you. You know, thank you for for putting together the whole show. It was, you know, really fun to be part of it. I, yeah. And thank you, Bart, for sponsoring it. Absolutely. Um, our pleasure. Thanks to the city of Benicia and the Arts and Cultural for Commission doing for, for their 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 uh, helping out and sponsoring this. So we really appreciate them. And uh, Greg, you and Dave did a wonderful production. I'm amazing. So. Wow, what can I say? <laughs> well, thank cool. you, uh, thank you for involving me in this, and we look forward to doing more yeah. in the future. And thanks to everybody at home who's watching this and being supportive. And uh, we'll be uh, looking uh, for Eric in the future to play uh, in Carnegie Hall. And, uh, yes, and yes, Davy. But, hey, but Hall. Eric, we, we got to get backstage passes. That's part of the deal. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, of course. If, if you know, if it ever happens, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks, guys. It was nice talking with you, and thanks to everybody at home. Yeah. Have yeah. a good evening, everybody. Thanks All for right. watching, everybody. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> Bye.